Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Inspire's DNA. Okay, so today I want to do a review of water parameters, or how you can get started with water parameters. Now, <clears throat> I've done a number of videos on scenario analysis and water parameters, but I thought it would be a good opportunity to just review how do you get started, how do you implement it, how do you need to think about it, um, because during the recent uh, Enterprise DNA Learning Summit, we, I had a whole session on it, and it was very well received. Uh, so I just thought, look, I think we should just do a deep dive into what of uh, parameters, and then um, you can see, you know, the potential with with this completed solution um, that that I'll showcase um, to you now. You know, in, incorporating a lot of these parameters and, and, and running that, that that really high quality scenario analysis. Now, what I'll do, I'll leave a link in the description below to the uh, full. Uh, to the full session, so it went for about 45 minutes or so, um, and so if you want to look at how I created this exact dashboard basically that we're looking at, uh, and how you can incorporate a lot of uh, a lot of the features, you know, uh, sort of the data model, etc., um, and over overlay that into um, into a lot of these visualizations, then then certainly check that out. But I want I want to just uh, go into what are parameters, how I set it up, and then just and then really actually the mentality or, 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 or the methodology that I like to think about when I actually implement these uh, in, in reports and, uh, and models that I develop. So the key thing, the key thing to note, uh, uh, or, the, or I guess the key uh, thinking you've got to do around what of, what of analysis implementation is what sort of variables are we going to shock? This, this, is, what I, this is how I think about it. Now, when I say variables, we, we want to think about, okay, well, what actually, if we, were, if we were to run some sort of scenarios, what are the variables that could impact a change or could cause a change in our results? And those are things like variables like pricing, variables like demand, costs, or even if you want to think more broadly, I, I would even um, classify things like competition or, or, or something of that nature. I mean, that's going to, that is a variable that could impact performance or um, you know, the performance in a, in a particular scenario that you might want to overlay on your results. So what we have to do is we need to try and incorporate some sort of parameter, these water parameters, into these variables, right? And so you've got to come and have a look at your a sales table and work out a way of how you can effectively integrate integrate these parameters into the analysis that you're trying to do because you want it to be seamless you want it to be able to or, or the scenario analysis methodology and implementation to work seamlessly with the current data model that you have now if i look at my sales table here you'll see that say for instance we wanted to change the demand or we wanted to run a scenario on demand well we actually have this order quantity column which we could uh, impact and that's going to affect, say, or that's going to represent, say, changes in demand, because if demand goes up, you'd think it would sell more, right? Or if demand goes down, we're going to sell less. And so that is, uh, in isolation, a, a variable within a, within a fact table that we can shock. Now, if we wanted to do the same to price, we also, luckily enough, have a, pr uh, a unit price column as well, right? So we can also shock this one. So so that so it, this this table in effect is 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 actually uh, set up nicely for us to now integrate these parameters. But the key here is to isolate because what you're going to find is that say for instance you want to combine multiple order parameters at any one time because if you think about it in the real world things don't just happen. You know demand doesn't increase or decrease for no reason. If there's some sort of other factor at play that was causing it. It could be changes in price. It could be competition. It could be costs, etc., etc., etc. So we want to be able to combine lots of these different parameters all at once. And the key thing is in, in terms of why you need to um, look at your fact table and try and isolate these individual variables is because we need to write iterating functions to be able to implement a lot of analysis very successfully. And what do I mean by that? So, if we just think about what our uh, our um, benchmark is, right? Our benchmark might be so sales or it might be forecast sales. Well, that's just going to be a pretty standard calc in a lot of cases. But somehow we need to um, be able to for every single uh, potential. Uh, transaction in the future or in the past even if, if we're comparing in the past we need to somehow overlay these these individual parameters on those variables so let's have a look at exactly how i did it in this case so i've created a measure and, and i went through this also in the session i created a measure 
using uh, SAMEX. So this is this is the key. This is one of the this is basically the key thing to think about. Key part of the methodology. First of all, you got to think about it right, and then then you got to implement it. And usually, you're going to have to use a an iterating function. So you got to understand iterating functions well. In this case, I've used SUMX, and what I'm going to do at every single row in the sales table, because SUMX is an iterating function, so we're going to iterate through every single row. We are going to times or multiply the quantity by one plus the demand scenario so you see here we've got a demand scenario in this case it's it's currently on six percent so that's going to be 1.06 and then multiply the that the, the calculation we get from that by the price multiplied by the pricing scenario so you see here we have now combined or integrated say our water parameters here into our actual result and so that's how we've now integrated these um, unique parameters that are dynamic, obviously, because we can change them up and down like that. But they are then integrated into the actual results that we might have now, or we might have projected results into the future. Um, it's the same, exactly the same technique. And then you can see, well, we can actually, uh, at any one time, dynamically ch uh, select a range of different scenarios and see how that affects our performance. And we can, um, uh, um, because of it's integrated into our model, our model hasn't changed at all, you can see that we can dynamically flip between or place any additional context on our results and then uh, achieve different, uh, different looks and different information on our report page. <laughs> So pretty powerful stuff, right? Now to actually create these water parameters, it's, it's, it's really not too difficult and I won't go through exactly how to do it, but basically all you've got to do is uh, find the uh, water parameter uh, icon, which is in uh, the modeling, I believe, modeling ribbon, and uh, then put in the correct, the sort of the bounds of the parameters that you want, and then uh, overlay those into your visualization. And yeah, then you can sort of uh, set up, you know, there's very many different ways you could set this up. Um, but what's also great, what also is great, and I want you to think about this, I won't go into it because I, I will cover bookmarks in a lot of cases, but you can actually now, if you think about it, you can bookmark, you can bookmark certain scenarios, and you might say have a best case, and you'll sort of put it onto the best case and uh, sa save it down as, as like so. Then you might want to say, okay, well, what's the worst case? And then you might want to reset your parameters and then bookmark that. And so there's so many different ways that you can now tell great stories with your what if parameters and revenue uh, and scenario analysis. So you know, that certainly certainly um, quite excites me in terms of the potential there. Okay, so I'm just going to wrap this one up. Uh, as, as I said, I'll put a link below to the full session um, where, I, where I, I, I went through this and, and obviously more because I had more time and showed how I uh, was able to create the visualization like it currently is here. Um, so certainly if you want to um, check out those, uh, check out that replay, certainly recommend it. Uh, and yeah, if, uh, I think that, that, that will wrap it up for now. If, if you like the content, certainly throw uh, the um, video a like, really appreciate it. And, and don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. There's so much more content on Power BI coming out very, very soon. Um, and, and I don't want you to miss it. So certainly subscribe if you want to get that. Okay, all the best. Cheers.